Hey, so this is Lee Patterson, Geotechnical Engineer and Chief Pilot, Stantec in Dunedin. Um, I was asked recently to go up and look at a rockfall that had closed uh, an access road in uh, rural Nelson. Um, this here shows the relationship of the site to Nelson. Uh, we went inland uh, to a place just about 10 kilometers uh, inland of Natimoti. I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. Um, and this is uh, where the site was. Um, you can see it, hopefully when it clarifies out, there we go. Um, there was a failure uh, that had blocked the road, uh, accessing up into the hills. Um, so for uh, for the guys on site, it looked uh, like this. This is the view up the road and another view down the road. Um, these are actually Google Street Views that I took on site, uh, which are useful because you can uh, look around and uh, get a sense for what the place looked like. Um, as well as uh, maybe find something that you missed previously. So we flew the drone in order to do a PIX4D model. Um, we flew the drone and got photographs uh, like this, as well as a grid from above. Um, and we managed to get some reasonably detailed shots of the underhang of the, uh, the feature, uh, which is fretting even now and has a propensity for, um, uh, definitely for future failure. Um, so from that, we produced the PIX4D model. This is, uh, this is quite a powerful model um, in that uh, we could get quite close to the, uh, the subject and really get a good handle on, uh, on the dimensions. Uh, we could take dimensions straight off this model or we can export the model uh, into uh, uh, a cloud uh, interrogation software. So uh, you can see what the problem is, large pile of material, uh, but as well as that, this uh, significant overhang is left. Um, and I had concerns about being able to measure exactly how big that overhang uh, was likely to be. So in cloud compare, uh, this is uh, the densified cloud uh, model for the site. Uh, we can zoom in a little bit here if, uh, if the whole machine will start to play ball with me. Uh, yep, it's having a bit of a think because it's quite a dense piece of information. Um, but from here, uh, we can do a number of things. We can um, uh, get rid of the opposite side of the valley because that doesn't really help us. So we can turn it off and on. Uh, we can bring ourselves up to, uh, oops, up to uh, excuse me. There we go. So we actually want to be on the other side. So that's that side and that side. There we go. Um, so we can look at an elevation view of the site and see what uh, what the site looks like. Obviously, it was a much larger historical feature that happened uh, I think nearly a decade ago. Uh, but this feature itself is still quite a concern. Uh, what we can do is we can start to take um, sections through the site, um, give ourselves uh, a little bit more um, to interrogate, uh, let me see if I can just lock this. Yep. So from here, I can uh, I can just lock the site so that we're spinning in at 90 degrees. And uh, our concern was uh, a little bit of how much uh, was going to go in here. So we also removed the vegetation from the model a little bit locally, um, and uh, we can then apply a planar failure, uh, which fits to the plane. So this is a plane of best fit that goes through the model. Uh, and you can see it uh, has a tendency to daylight um, up in this area here. Uh, so we know that uh, if this failure here measures at about 35 meters on the angle, um, we can anticipate going at least 15 to 20 meters up into the face above uh, when we have to consider clearing this debris, uh, not debris, overhanging snout. Um, it's quite interesting. There's a whole bunch of uh, prevailing geology. Um, but at the same time, um, yeah, there are people who wish to access this uh, track to get uh, to one or two residences up the way and uh, Department of Conservation track, which I understand is quite popular.